Quarterbacks in the portal. We have got a slew of them. Bo Nix announced that he is transferring from Auburn, which was surprising if for no other reason than he has been the starting quarterback for three years. Yep. He has gone through a head coaching change, and he is a legacy name at the school. That's kind of a big deal right now. We're trying. To, he has also marked in the transfer portal, there is something that says don't contact. Like there's a little yeah. that thing you can check where he's telling schools do not contact him. That's right. So it sounds like he has already got at least a short list of places that he is deciding between, and he doesn't want the whole country calling his cell phone. And I totally get that, right? Along with him, Zach Calzada, Texas A&M starting quarterback for most of this season. He is out. He is going elsewhere this year. Keaton Slovis from USC announced that he is transferring. And there's a whole slew of other ones, right? We, we haven't talked much about the transfer portal, but these are the most recent. Michael Penix from Indiana announced on Tuesday he is going to transfer to Washington, which caught me by surprise because my first thought was, hey, wait, didn't Jake Hayner say that he was transferring back to Washington? Yeah. And I have been told uh, on Twitter, there were a bunch of different people that told me, hey, you got this wrong. His waiver was denied to go back to Washington because he already transferred to Fresno State. That was his one-time thing. Did not know that that was you know already being brought up, but apparently I'm, I'm he would okay have to with sit that. Out here. You know that you know oh, that yeah. we talked about this. I'm I'm okay. I want these guys to get one free pass with no questions asked. Anything other than that, I'm totally okay. If you want to scrupulize it, I'm totally okay with you want to scrutinize it. I think it just made up a new word <laughs> and like like dive into why you're transferring all this other stuff come up with a you know reason and have to get a waiver i'm okay with that you gave me the one free pass i'm gonna be okay with with his uh claim to washington being denied uh i think it's gonna be a little dicey in that fresno state locker room i'm curious to see do you think he starts the bowl game yes yes i do 100%. not i do not oh i, I do think not. he does Oh, I think I think you don't. I may be wrong. Maybe wrong. That's a, we'll see. I mean, I, they don't have anybody that is close to as talented as him. It but depends on if they want team, to win. They're playing a team where nobody on the other side has anybody as close to talented as him either. So agreed, agreed. UTEP was uh, was a fun story this year, but they are not a a great football team. They're they're um, bowl eligible for one very reason. They just backloaded that conference. That 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 schedule would just yes, trash. Yes, or they front loaded did. it. Yes, they absolutely did. Uh, but they they got to a bowl game. I, I would imagine yep. Jake Aner will probably start the game, but we'll we'll see. We'll see what Lee Marks decides to do. He is the interim coach there. Tedford will be the coach there. We already talked about that before. Uh, the Penix transfer to Washington. That one's interesting. When Penix yeah, is healthy, that's big. When he, when he's healthy and when he's got a good offensive line, he can be really really successful. That's exactly right. I I think he's got I think he's got that at Washington. I think he's got a pretty decent offensive line. I am curious, you know, the weapons and, and all that. Uh, what is this team going to look like? Uh, you know, Kalen DeBoer, as the offensive coordinator with Michael Penix, can do some pretty amazing things. I think it's a pretty good move for him. I agree. So, And, and I think it works well for his development, right? Because uh, DeBoer was with Penix at Indiana early. And... You know, DeBoer was the uh, the OC at Indiana in his first season. So it makes sense that he would go back over to him. So, well, let's just be honest. He's not going to be playing the defenses that he was playing in the Big Ten. I mean, that's he, true. He, he drew the short straw of going up against Iowa and, and Wisconsin and, like, the really tough defenses of the, the West in the Big Ten all the time. And that didn't, that didn't help the old resume. Staying healthy was, was brutal and tough. But but some of that's, you know, you're playing Big Ten football and gray skies. I wonder if a different style of football, different style of opponents, you don't have anybody that's really playing power football. Maybe maybe Oregon's capable of it. But outside of Utah, nobody, nobody else is playing power football out there. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. all spread. It's all speed. And and that that's got to be good for the joints. Yeah, no, he. I think he can be uh, pretty successful in Seattle. You got any thoughts on Knicks or Calzada or or Slovis? The Knicks one shocked me. I didn't. I, I didn't expect that, and and I'm really, I'm really curious about it. So I wonder if if I, maybe the coaching staff told him in in a in a moment of honesty to a player, hey, 
we love you. We appreciate what you do. And we know what you mean to this school and what this school means to you. If you want to play football your senior year, you're going to have to find somewhere else because we have another guy. I'm curious who that guy is, right? I, I, I'm not the coach. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I'm just telling you that's the only thing I can think of. That's uh, the other. Well, what I might think of is the fact that they just fired the offensive coordinator and Bo Nix was pretty excited about what Mike Bobo was doing with the offense. But, but when, when he it's was not like when Bo was in there and when he was healthy, they were they were having success. They were six and two like they were rocking and rolling. The A&M game obviously did not work. And then he got hurt the game after that. Um, so here's here's the problem with that argument. Somebody needs to sit him down and realize, explain to him that that offense wasn't working because of Mike Bobo. Because Mike Bobo doesn't draw up the play where he runs 75 yards left and right multiple times in a single play to find somebody open. That's Bo Nix making something happen when the play doesn't work. Agreed. agreed That's but- why his offense worked against Arkansas. That's why yes. his offense worked against LSU. That's why their offense worked against Ole Miss. Three teams that they lose to if Bo Nix isn't magical. Okay. So here's here's the other part of this, right? You have had three years where two years under Gus Malzahn, you did not develop whatsoever. But, but three different three different offensive systems and three different offensive coordinators. Basically. Basically. Yes. So this year, his senior year, he wants one more crack in it, and I think he wanted to be the one to make the decision as opposed to just trusting Brian Harson, who he's only known for one year, to bring in somebody that he's going to have to work with every day why not take the opportunity, enter the transfer portal, and go and find somebody that you would prefer to work with as opposed to the other way around, right? And I'm curious, does he, you know, I have a feeling Bobo is going to get picked up somewhere. Does it, I just would find it weird that he would build a relationship with a guy that he's only known for one year. Well, it may not have been super tight relationship. It may have just been, man, I've been through this three years. I don't want somebody else to make my decision for me. That's fine. That's, I get it. That's that. what I'm guessing. It's, just, it's still it still shocked me. The rest of them are just football moves. Yeah. Calzada was the backup to begin with. I'm assuming with this class that A and M's bringing in, that's supposed to be the best class in the country. That that somewhere in there is a quarterback. Yeah, and the guy that was starting in front of you last year is probably going to take his place when he's healthy this year. So the Calzada thing's a football move. Like that makes total sense. Uh, I did see some people talking about the idea of, you know, basically swapping quarterbacks. Like if Bo Nix went to Texas A&M, like how successful could he be in a Jimbo Fisher offense? And I, that sounds but, really fun. Uh, Bo so Nix going to fine. Ole Miss could be fun. The the problem the problem with Bo Nix going to, to A&M is, is I think the quarterback that's on the roster there is already better than him. It, entirely possible. We didn't get to see much of Haynes King this season. We, I mean, no, but, but I just games, trust I Jimbo. Yeah. I mean, Jimbo got his guy for a reason. So, but maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm curious. I don't think Bo stays in the SEC. I think Bo goes down a level. I think he, yeah. well, he definitely could. I, I don't see him going to UCF. That would shock me. No, no, that shock. won't happen at all. I don't think he's got the relationship. I'll tell you where I want to see him go, which I don't think he will because I still think he's better than this, but maybe not. Maybe not. I'd like to see him go to UAB. He gets to stay in the state of Alabama. He's not too far from home. Yeah, and, I don't think UAB, gets, is, I don't think they would take him because they just took the uh, the kid from Baylor. So, Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, I didn't so, see that transfer. Yeah, the, the backup okay. from, uh, now, from Baylor, they, they've kind of – They've said, all right, we're good on quarterback for a while because they still got Dylan Hopkins, who's who's That's got right. two years left. And well, I, knew, I knew they had Hopkins, but anyway, neither here nor there. So yeah, Texas A and M has Connor Wigman coming in. He's a five star quarterback. Yeah, so A and M for the Calzada situation, they got another guy coming in, probably uh, a step above what Calzada brought to the table. And then Keaton Slovis, uh, I think everybody understood. Jackson Dart has kind of taken that job out there. So we'll see. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.